Where the hell are all the houses? No, seriously, where are they? They're supposed to be rolling out here in the spring. Uh, we thought this year was gonna be better, but so far, not so much. Hey everybody, Hans with the Gunderman Group here. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're gonna do a quick market update. It is now early March, March 5th specifically when I'm recording this. And I wanted to share with you what's been happening in the market so far this year. Spoiler alert, it hasn't been going according to plan. All year last year, we thought it was gonna be significantly better. We thought that we were gonna turn that calendar over, rates were gonna start coming down, inventory was gonna roll out, and we were gonna get back to some level of normalcy. For context, 2023 was awful. It was actually the worst real estate market in nearly 30 years, which is a lifetime or more for many of the first time home buyers out here. It actually hasn't been worse for many of the people who are actually in the market today. So what happened? Why in the heck are we sitting here in March feeling like things aren't going well? What I did is go back into the data and try to decipher what's been happening. Why have I been feeling like things have been going so poorly? Well, I have the answer and I'm gonna break it down for you right now. So I mentioned earlier that 2023 was one of the worst years in real estate ever, at least for many of us who are younger and in the market in some capacity. I did a little Instagram video. I've linked that post down in the show notes if you wanna check that one out. But in general, what we have found is things have just gotten really, really slow. Hey, so if you've got some value out of this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna continue to put out content like this and also leave me a comment for future video ideas. I'd love to hear from you. So let's look at some numbers real quick. In 2023, which was the worst real estate market in decades, we had 1,144 units close in January, February, and the first five days of March. Now spring forward a year to our uh, year to date numbers today, and we are looking at, drum roll, 1,105 units. About three and a half percent difference, actually lower than what was the worst real estate market. So what gives? People have been talking about how 2024 was gonna be a better year, it was gonna be stronger numbers. Why? What is happening? Well. That just shows us how much close. Let's look at what came onto the market. Interestingly, we had a significant bump of new inventory in Alameda County show up on the market this year. 2,216 homes, condos, townhouses, units, as we broadly call them, came to the market and were on the market during that just over two month period I referred to, January, February, and early March. Last year, same time, actually a lot less came on the market. 1,806 units in total to be specific. We actually saw a lot more property show up on the market to be bought and sold than we did last year, which is a really good sign. We were hoping to see this, but why aren't we feeling it? Why aren't the numbers of actually closings getting us where we wanna get? Well, here's why. Days on market has expanded significantly. If you look at what is on the market today of all those 2,200 properties, the average days on market is 60 in Alameda County. That's two months, six zero. That's huge compared to what we've been used to and had over the last several years. In fact, it's double what it was last year. On average, the properties that sold during this first couple months of the year sold in an average of 31 days. So we literally doubled in that capacity. The properties that didn't sell and came off the market had been on the market for something between one and a half to two and a half months, depending on what data set you look at. So there were certainly some that lingered, didn't sell, and eventually came off, and it took them you know, two months-ish on average to do so. But the ones that actually transacted did so in a month ish, right? But when you look even a little further back at 2022, what you find is that the average sold property did so in about 17 days county wide. So we've literally doubled twice in a row on the days on market. That's the storyline. Things are lingering. Why? That's the question that everyone is trying to answer. Why are things so slow? Why aren't we transacting like we were just two years ago? The answer, you guys, is interest rates. I'm not gonna get into a huge video. I'm actually gonna do another video on that. Once it's linked up here, I'll explain what's going on interest rate wise. 
people who have, you know, sub, call it 5% interest rates even at this point, but definitely those who are four and a half, four and below are staying put. If they go buy a new house, even if it's the same house, you know, a lateral move or a downsize move, their payments likely going to be pretty similar, if not a little bit higher for that lateral move or uh, that smaller house, which isn't that good of a feeling for most people. So there's a lock in effect. A lot of people aren't doing it. Secondly is an affordability issue. Whenever I go and meet with a, with a seller, we find, we sit down and we talk about their value expectations, the comps, what the market's doing, and we try to create a strategy to how to get them what they want, right? But I always bring up how much the payment is for the desired price point, the price outcome that they're seeking for their buyer. And what I'm finding is, you know, their eyes kind of roll back in their head and they can't believe the monthly outlay that's required to own the property that they have loved and lived in for so many years. In fact, when you factor in taxes and insurance, which is no joke these days, you're finding that property that's very average in almost any market across the East Bay, at least for single family homes, you're looking at payments that are in the six to uh, $12,000 a month when you factor in all the costs, right? And, and that has a real impact on affordability. And especially when people are looking at like moving up, getting out of a rental, downsizing, lateral move, it's expensive. It's a lot to stomach. And so between that lock and effect of I'll just stay put until affordability gets a little bit better, and the people who are looking are paying a lot, so then they become more picky or they want something, if they're gonna pay six, eight, ten thousand dollars a month, they want it to be really ideal in choice. That's where you get this longer days on market. People aren't as quick to transact like they were in 2022, and that's creating this kind of divide between the uh, sellers and the buyers, and that's why you see this days on market doubling again. So here's my advice. I'm seeing what I call A properties, A plus properties, you know it. It's the one that's teed up and beautiful, it's on a great location or a great block, it's totally move and ready. That property is transacting, they're, everyone's kind of driving at that because if they're gonna pay all this money out, they want that choice property. So if you are shopping, don't be afraid to look at and make offers on those B properties, those C properties, especially if they meet your needs, right? Now, that doesn't mean they have to be your forever home or your perfect home, but there's a deal to be had there. There's oftentimes a seller who's kind of sitting there, you know, waiting for someone to choose them to dance, if you will. But there are a couple things that are causing this. Number one, there's a lock-in effect. And if you come along with something that feels fair and reasonable, they're likely going to engage with you because they see the days on market expanding. They see people not coming to their house and looking at it. So they're more than likely willing to work with with you. And the other thing to consider is consider a buy down. A lot of those sellers will be supple to a concession of some kind to get your rate into the place where it needs to be, will help you figure out something with your insurance, with timeline or whatever. There are ways to make deals happen right now because there is just this gap in the psychology that's in play in the market. When there's those opportunities, when everyone's going one way, you go the other way, you're going to find some success out there. So I hope you got some value out of that. Make sure if you did, you like the video, subscribe to the channel because I'm going to continue to put out content like this and throw a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your opinion, your experience, your story, and also topics and ideas for future videos. So without any further ado, this is Hans with the Gunnerman Group signing off for now.